And uh, it's really my pleasure this afternoon to be able to introduce our next speaker. And I know all, this, all of the introducers have, have mentioned what their attire is, so I guess I have to follow that. And I'm kind of a fusion here this afternoon of everything from Uniqlo to Marks and Spencer, Bloomingdale's, Brooks Brothers, and I, I know that Tom Julian would not approve of that kind of mix, but that happens to be what I have on today, and, and probably something from Costco. And all of you, to have, to have gotten in today, you should have had to show your Costco card. Did you do that? I hope, hope you did. But again, it's a real honor to introduce our next speaker, Mr. Jim Senegal co-founder and director of Costco, and recently retired president and CEO of Costco. You know, uh, Jim, when he sent his uh, bio, he sent two small paragraphs. I mean, very humble person and someone who uh, doesn't certainly, uh, well, what his accomplishments doesn't deserve to be that humble, but two little paragraphs. I'm going to expand on that just a little bit because it's a phenomenal company and, and accomplishments that this organization in the last 30 years. But Jim was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, and moved to San Diego, uh, and I think when he was about 15 or as a teenager. But being from Pittsburgh, I know he has to be a Steelers and a Pirate fan, no doubt about that. But uh, Jim started his career in retail at 18 years old and it's been a climb to the top since that time. Uh, Jim worked 25 years for the discount merchandising company Fedmart Corporation uh, and its successor company, uh, The Price Club, which was started by uh, retail pioneer Sol Price. Uh, Jim advanced in that organization to become vice president. In 1983, Jim left The Price Club to open the first Costco wholesale club in Seattle, Washington. He didn't open it in San Diego. He moved to Washington to do that, and uh, maybe he'll tell us uh, why they decided to move to Seattle from San Diego at that time. But Costco, as we all know, was a huge success, grown very quickly, and in 1997, the company changed its name to Costco Wholesale. As I mentioned, the retail community has certainly a great deal of admiration for Costco and what it's accomplished in the world of retail. Uh, you have to be impressed with the, how they, uh, the employees and how they value or, and the employees are valued and treated at, at Costco. I saw a TV special within the last year about Costco, and uh, one of the things they, they talked about and all of the employees talked about is what, what it was like to work at Costco. And they showed uh, Jim Senegal's office and has this very small office. I'm not even sure it was a private office. And here, I, it made me kind of feel bad. I look at my big office and everything. I need to downsize, there's no doubt about it, when I see what someone like him, uh, but that's just the, 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 the way he works and, uh, and one of the reasons he's so admired. Uh, the thing I like about Costco, and I think I'm just talking to people when they saw that Jim was on the program here about Costco, you know, it's one of those places that on a Saturday or Sunday, I'll be driving around uh, we and, and the Costco there on Scottsdale on Hayden Road, and I, I don't need anything, but I'll stop at a Costco just to walk in and look around and say, you know, there's always something new, and I very seldom ever go into a Costco without buying something. I think that's, that's true with all of us, but it's just an interesting place to go and browse for about an hour when you don't have anything else to do. Some quick figures here that uh, I just uh, have here, and I'm not sure these are all up to date, but I, one of the things I mentioned, uh, Costco has 174,000 employees, 622 stores, including, uh, of course, in the UK, in uh, the USA, but the UK, Australia, Canada, Mexico, Japan, and South Korea. Might have missed a country there, but uh, they have also, I mentioned the card, and I showed the card, 69 million members, 69 million members. That's astonished me. Uh, the year ended August 31st, 19, uh, 2012. Total sales of over $97 billion. Profits of $1.7 billion. Costco was rated 24th on Fortune's 500 list. Uh, Jim, we're very pleased to have you here today. We're honored to have you here, and we look forward to you sharing uh, the success story at, at Costco. Thank you.
Thank you. What, a, what an introduction. I uh, should borrow a line from uh, one of our board members, Charlie Munger, who after a rather effusive uh, introduction said, too bad that uh, my wife and my mother weren't here. To, you know, <laughs> my wife because she would have been amused, and my mother because she would have believed it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so I, uh, in keeping with the pattern this morning, Every single thing on my body, other than the slacks, is from Costco. Okay? <laughs> and I'm, inclu <laughs> I'm including the eyeglasses and the hearing aid. Okay? <laughs> I'm going to show you a video, and it's a video of things we typically show this at our shareholders meeting every year and at our managers meeting. And it's a bunch of clips that we like, and of course, we're easy to make fun of because of the things we do and the things we sell. And as many of you know, Costco doesn't advertise, so we don't do any advertising at all. You'll never see an ad on television or you'll see nothing in uh, the newspaper about us. So we really count on word of mouth. Word of mouth is the most significant form of advertising in our view. So I'll show you this video that'll tell you a little bit about our company. It's price, price, that's what gets you in. I know, I know the parking lot's always crowded. At Costco? Costco. Yeah. yeah, it is. <laughs> I'm usually in there every day. Fight for the space and it's just, I, oh, well, I, that's I, a real, yeah, there's a real problem. There's a lot of customers and they make a lot of money. You, I, you ever shop at Costco? Uh, uh, all the time. You buy in bulk? I do, yeah. Grizz buys in bulk. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he does. I got 106 rolls of toilet paper in the house right there. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just can't get out of Costco's, man. I buy in bulk. Yeah, I do too. I just like saying buying in bulk. <laughs> I know you've got your membership card to Costco. Uh, on any given weekend, Betty, you'll find me at Costco. The largest U.S. warehouse club chain posted its first first quarter profit numbers. The top analyst estimates here, it's focused on low prices, lured customers. Comparable store sales at Costco rose 6% for the quarter. And revenue for membership fees, yeah, that's up 14%, Matt. Yeah. This, I usually wear Xenia and Hermes ties. Kirkland? This is a Kirkland tie. I, I'm sorry, I'm, Costco. I'm going to touch this tie. I don't usually touch my Listen, colleagues. Listen, it's made clothing. in Italy. Look at this. Look at this. It's all silk. It's made in Italy. It's What's the fine, point? It's huh? What is the point? Tie. My point is that this is a $100 tie that <laughs> I got you. for $17 at Costco. You know what? In fact, Costco's the largest retailer mm -hmm. of wine in this country. So much to save. And you don't have to buy these in bulk. You can buy a single bottle of wine, but you can save about 15 to 30% compared to your local liquor store or online. It is famous for stretching the family dollar. From toilet paper to televisions, t-shirts to t-bones, Costco is an American staple for staples. But now the retailer, known for deep discounts, is selling fine art on its website. Costco says it keeps the cost below those of most art galleries by charging no more than a 14% markup on all retail items. And get this, your Warhol even comes with a money-back guarantee if you don't like it. That just might be better than 15 minutes of fame. Costco sells diamonds, too. <laughs> and not just tiny diamonds. Angie Boburn Lamite says Costco sold 100,000 carats last year alone. Costco uh, rated very high for the quality of its fresh meats. Very high. Mm -hmm. uh, and yet uh, Costco is about uh, uh, 28, 30 percent less expensive than Safeway or, or, um, or Albertsons. So you can get, actually, at Costco right now, a whole organic chicken is $2.29 a pound versus $3.99 a pound at a conventional supermarket. It's a big for the difference. Same. That's big a difference. big savings. And it's freezable, too, which yeah. is great. And then the five pounds of organic mixed veggies, this giant bag right here is five fifty nine. you know, freezable. It's mm. very good for you. The same amount comparable at a supermarket, $14. Are you serious? Like, that's a lot of money. It's almost three times the difference. So use those memberships to get organic at those warehouse clubs. It's a big difference. Very, very good tip. The shoppers have spoken. Costco ranks as the most popular retailer. Consumer Reports surveyed 26,000 Americans. The Issaquah-based discounter was tops in quality of merchandise, both in-store and online. It also won high marks for its electronics, sporting goods, and jewelry. Costco was the only one of the 10 major chains in the survey to get an outstanding overall rating. Mm -hmm. Costco, yes. too, is one of the best employers in the country. Yes. The best place. That's why mm -hmm. they're so happy over Have there. you ever noticed on their name tags, everyone on there, it's 11 years of service with them, yeah. Yeah. You know, 12, 15, yeah. whatever it might yeah. be. Gas prices are starting to fall, but they're still a lot higher here than the rest of the nation. So why is that? Coin Local 6 reporter Chad Carter shows us local lawmakers are now looking into it. 
Would you like a receipt today? Within minutes of opening, this new Costco gas station at their Clackamas location is buzzing with customers. It's as low as it gets around here because I did on my smartphone, I used Gas Buddy and $3.59 was the lowest price. With a price of $3.59 a gallon, it's certainly easy to see why they'd flock for a fill up. The gas alone is worth it. We are looking now at enough food to feed 30 people, and she has the receipt to prove it. How much did you spend? I don't have my glasses on now, right? $137.50, <laughs> people. That's $4.50 per person. I went to Costco this weekend. It was a two-cart weekend at Costco for me. People in the store were asking me if I worked there, for real, because I move things like I'm one of the employees. Leaving Costco, my truck was packed. So tightly, I couldn't see out of any of the windows. I could see out the front, and I could see like 1 18th out of the window in the back, and that was it. And the truck was almost completely packed with alcohol. It, <laughs> it was. Nothing else. Seriously, if, if someone had rear-ended me, I wouldn't have been arrested for a DUI. I would have drowned. <laughs> Now, I read a quote from you once. You said Costco is my favorite place in the world. Costco? It is. I love Costco. Oh, really? it's, okay. Yeah. It's a great, great place. Okay. Do you like it? I love the place. <laughs> yeah. uh, the ample parking, sure. all sorts of great things about it. Uh, but the number one thing for me yes. is, is the return policy. Well, I, don't even know, I didn't even know what it is. It's off the charts. Jay. Really? Yes. You can turn, return tuna fish to Costco? You can return this desk. I, they didn't even sell this model, but yeah. you could bring this yeah, in there. Right. They'll give you something wow. for this. But, well, um, well, what was the last thing you returned? Okay. Yeah. So this really, really happened. I had a um, beautiful two and a half ton uh, aluminum floor jack in okay. my garage, and it stopped working. And I, I remembered I got it at Costco. No problem. I take it back to Costco. I don't have a receipt. I take it up to the counter. He says, yeah, we sold these. Uh, do you have a receipt? No, I don't. How about your membership card? I give him the card. Mm -hmm. He looks it up. Boy, Dax, we don't have any record of you buying this thing. But then he goes, whew. But you, I know you bought it here. I believe you. So what could have happened? He, like, really wanted me to get this right. return done. He goes, is it possible you came with someone else and they used their card? And I go, wow, that is possible. I go, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I go, oh my gosh, I think sure. I got it. Yeah. I, I, I think I might have bought it with my ex-girlfriend's card. What's her name? Bree, blah, blah, blah. He types it in, bingo. Yes, we have a floor jack on here. Opens the register, just throwing money at me. Wow. Yes. Wow. Very good. Well, that's... <laughs> And they pay their employees well. Yeah, they well, all have well, insurance. <laughs> Everyone's joyous when you walk in there. Yeah, it's you, not got like the the, you got the job. You got the job. Card. What's her name? Bree, blah, blah, blah. He types in, bingo. Yes, we have a floor jack on here. Opens the register, just throwing money at Wow. Me. Yes. Wow. Very good. Well, that's. And they pay their employees well. Yeah, they well, all well, have insurance. <laughs> Everyone's joyous when you walk in there. It's you, not got like the the... you got the job. You got the job. The, um, I'm sorry to put you through that. But I love that stuff. So the, uh, I'll give you a little history. In, in 1982, my partner, Jeff Brotman, and I got together, and we drew up plans to start a business that uh, was mentioned earlier, the, uh, to clone a, a company called The Price Club that was operating in San Diego that I had worked for. Uh, they had started in 1976. And so Jeff and I went out uh, together, and we raised the money, raised $7.5 million in February of 1983. So we're just 30 years old at this point. And we used that money to hire the first 10, uh, 10 founding officers of our company. Um, about that time, the market started heating up because the Price Club was a very hot concept. And so there were a lot of people that were starting. Uh, Sam's was started by Walmart in 1983. BJ's was started by Zares on the East Coast and later, later became independent. Pace was associated with Kmart. And then there were some other independents here in the Midwest and price savers in uh, the Northwest. This is a picture of our first Costco. Uh, many of us were there from California. This looks purposely grim. It seemed like it was always raining up there. Uh, and our office was that little nodule you see on the front of the building there. And we've since purchased a new piece of property right adjoining this and uh, opened up uh, this building. 
which has all of the things that we've added to our business since we first started. When we start, first started, it was a 100,000 square foot building uh, that didn't have many of the embellishments that we've added over the years. And this new build, this building now has all of the things and is updated. Our original business plan, when we raised the money, we told our investors that we thought we could eventually grow to 12 warehouses. We thought of ourselves as a Northwest company, and you see the cities there that we thought we would be operating in. Uh, we said that uh, if we could average sales of about $80 million per, faci per facility, that we could probably be a billion dollar company and return a 3% profit for our shareholders. So that's how we raised the $7.5 million. We used that money to open not only in Seattle, but also in Portland and in Spokane, Washington. Our first year of operation, uh, we started in September, of, September 15th of 1983. So our fiscal year ran from September through August. Our first year of sales on all of our buildings combined was $101 million. And during the course of the summer, uh, we did some additional financing and we raised and, and opened the buildings in Salt Lake City and in Tacoma, Washington, and in South Center, which is a suburb of Seattle, and in Tampa, Florida. And of course, everybody says, well, Tampa, Florida, you were a Northwest company, how did you get there? Uh, and I jokingly tell them that so many of us were from California, we were looking for someplace warm that we could go to. The truth of the matter is we realized that we had misjudged the market share that was available in our business, and we were looking for someplace uh, where we could cluster about 10 of our types of businesses, and Florida seemed to fit the bill for us. Uh, in 1985, we opened up in California uh, and in Canada. In 1986, we opened up in the Midwest, in Milwaukee and in uh, Minneapolis. In 1987, we closed in the Midwest. <laughs> uh, it was clear that in that market, we underwhelmed them, and uh, it was a classic case of uh, business people spending 80% of their time on 20% of the problem, and so we got out of the market, and, and we, did, well, we did that in a fashion uh, by refunding every single dollar of membership that we had charged and paying and offering every, a job to every single employee in another community with it and taking care of our suppliers because we knew at some point in time we would probably be back. 1988, we added fresh foods to our assortment. We didn't have much in the way of refriger refrigerated products prior to that, so these are uh, USDA choice and prime steaks that are sold in those packages that you love, four and five steaks to a package. Uh, 1992, we opened up in Mexico, in a suburb of Mexico City. In 93, we opened up in London, uh, a suburb of London called uh, Watford. In 1993, we also merged with that company that I mentioned earlier, which was the Price Club, and for a brief period of time, we became Price Costco before we just reverted back to Costco as the name. In 95, we opened up our first Costco in South Korea, in Seoul, and as you can imagine, uh, real estate is very, very dear and expensive, so we had to go vertical there. So in this particular building, there are two floors of cell, and four floors of parking, so have, we have a lot of people movers inside this facility. Uh, the following year, we opened up in New York, starting in Stanton Island. In 97, uh, we expanded our membership to be ju not just a membership card that you bought for $50, but a, an expanded membership that provided a whole menu of services like credit card processing and insurance packages and car insurance and, and mortgages and et cetera, uh, each of which would pay for the additional money. And in addition, as an executive member, you got a 2% rebate on all of your purchases. In 99, we got involved in uh, e-commerce. Uh, one of the hallmarks of our business in e-commerce is that we've been profitable from the day we opened. Uh, today, that business this year will probably run very close to two and a half billion dollars for us. If you look in the picture, and it's probably difficult to see, but the third picture over is a Picasso sketch that we were selling for $40,000 that sold in less than 24 hours after we had it online. So a lot of really unusual things that we have online. In 1999, we opened up in Japan. Uh, here we are breaking the uh, traditional uh, sake barrel there. Uh, 
the gray-haired gentleman that you see there is uh, Tom Foley, who's the former Speaker of the House of Congress. And uh, my partner, Jeff, is standing next to him, and that's me in the center. And the young man behind the hammer there that you can't see his face is one of my sons who we sent over to Japan who started our business. And today, we have 15 Costco's operating in Japan. In the year 2000, we started and expanded services of uh, tourism for our members. So we provide vacation packages and uh, cruises. We uh, set up some special order kiosks in 2001, which enabled customers to come in and do special order on things like leather couches and multiple colors that would be delivered to them in three or four weeks. We started accepting American Express, uh, which became a co-branded card for us uh, in 2004. And so we now have that uh, where our members get a rebate, up, uh, probably on average about 2% on all their purchases. I think our our rebates this past year to our members was uh, over a billion dollars. Uh, that has to be cashed at Costco. Year 2006, we started a car wash. And of course, leave it to us, we started it in Seattle. <laughs> and I, next time we'll tie Nome, Alaska, I guess. And that's a, uh, today, Costco is the dominant membership warehouse operator. We've got a lot of financial strength. Uh, we think that we engage in a lot of merchandising excitement. Our members are very loyal to us. Uh, we've got a strong, cohesive management team. Uh, we're committed to grow, growing our business and to building market share, and we'll continue to grow our business. Uh, today, we are the third largest retailer in the U.S. We're actually the second largest in a retailer, if you consider all of our international business. And we're the sixth largest retailer in the world, 24th largest Fortune 500 company, and have a market cap of $46 billion. Our sales for the last 12 months were $101 billion. We have 89 million square feet of what we refer to as warehouse store space, 173,000 employees on a worldwide basis, and about 2 million transactions a day. Uh, this shows 624 warehouses, but this week, I was just at a new opening that we had in Chihuahua, in Mexico, and then another one in Washington, D.C. So that's now 624 warehouses on a worldwide basis. Uh, we operate in 42 states and nine countries. Our members are very loyal. We have uh, almost 38 million households that shop with us, or 69 million people who are running around with a Costco card. They're loyal. They renew at a 90% rate with us every year. That's the highest in the history of our company. Uh, so we're very pleased with that. And it generates about $2.3 billion in fees for the last 12 months. Dollars that are fungible, of course, and dollars that we can use to lower the price on the television sets or on the stakes. Demographics, uh, contrary to what a lot of people might think, Costco members are at the top end of the demographic scale. If you look at the household income, the average household income in the U.S. is about $68,000, and Costco is almost $94,000. And that's true in every country where we do business. Uh, we have an upscale customer uh, that wants better merchandise and is going to sell better merchandise or buy better merchandise. Volume, big volume, is uh, a hallmark of our business. Uh, we've got one warehouse in, uh, uh, in South Carolina. Korea, Seoul, South Korea, that does almost a half a billion dollars in sales. Uh, we have several that do between 300 and, and 400 million dollars. And as you can see, there are 126 of our businesses do more than 200 million dollars a year in business. Our strengths, uh, clearly the, the 69 million member uh, cardholders, uh, the strong renewals, uh, the fact that we have established an attitude with members that we have absolute pricing authority. Uh, that was a title and a name that was hung on us by uh, uh, an analyst with Goldman Sachs years ago that indicated that more than any other retailer, Costco had established pricing authority on every single thing that we sold. We got fantastic employees. We work hard to keep them and to keep them happy and to promote them and to build careers in our company. We have great merchandise. We have a treasure hunt atmosphere in our business. Despite our size, we like to think like a small company. We want to be nimble and we want to be able to move quickly. 
and we want to develop and have consistently tried to develop a quality image everywhere in our business. Whether it's the 10-foot parking stalls that we put out in our parking lot, or the quality of the employees, or the quality of the merchandise, or the cleanliness of our food courts, we want to create an image of quality on every single thing we do. Our strategy is very simple. We have a very limited selection. At the moment, it's about 3,800 SKUs, or stock keeping units. Uh, to put that in perspective, if you were to go into a Target or a Walmart superstore that carries essentially the same categories of goods that we do, they might have 120 to 140,000 items. So we really pre-select the merchandise that we sell. And we watch that very carefully. We are continually watching that. We measure that SKU count on a, on a monthly basis. We cover a wide range of product categories, high quality national brands with a selected private label program. We have to be able to show a savings on everything we sell. If we can't, we won't carry it. To give you an example, uh, at one point in time in Portland, we stopped selling sugar because every supermarket in the city of Portland was selling sugar below cost and we couldn't show a savings to our customer. And our attitude was, if a customer came in and saw we weren't the right price on sugar, they had every reason to believe we weren't the right price on the Michelin tires or on the Samsung television set, that it was a chink in the armor for us. We've engaged in a lot of packaging innovation and a lot of new products and services over the years. Here's an example of one of the things that we do. If you were to go into a typical supermarket and go to the cereal aisle, you might find about 350 products on the shelves. If you go into Costco, you're going to find 12. We go out to somebody like General Mills and get the largest box of cereal we can get them to make and put it on a pallet. And if you can think about this and think about the scope of savings, it takes us a matter of seconds to move that pallet into a picking position for the customers. So that is where we show the savings. In efficiency throughout our system on everything that we do. Now the catch is you better like Cheerios because you can. <laughs> TVs, a big business for us this past year in the US we sold over $2 billion in television sets with great names like Sony and Panasonic and Samsung and LG and Sharp. Cameras like Nikon and, and uh, Canon and Olympus. Diamonds. Uh, they mentioned 113,000 carats. We have recent sales uh, in one of our Maryland warehouses of $103,000, $104,000 in uh, Portland. So we do sell high-end diamonds. We had a diamond on sale for a million dollars. Uh, it was uh, appraised at $1.6 million. Products like uh, you see here, Lucky Jeans and Calvin Klein Jeans. The shirt, this is the Kirkland Signature shirt. Uh, I'm wearing a Kirkland Signature shirt. Uh, don't judge it by the way it looks on me. Uh, it's, it's a great product and, and we sell it for $17.99. Wine, they mentioned earlier in there, we're the, we are to our knowledge the largest seller of wine in the world. We don't know of anyone who does more business on wines than we, we do and we sell a lot of very fine wines. Produce. Of course, you don't get to come in and just buy uh, individual tomatoes. You've got to buy the lug. Seafood shows here. Here you see crab king, uh, king crab legs uh, that we show. We usually put these out on weekends. And the weekend we were showing this, we had this for $15.99, and the local supermarkets had it for $29.99. Fresh bakery, everything baked on uh, premises. This is not an unusual picture on the two or three days before Thanksgiving, this woman is going out with about 50 pumpkin pies at one time. Fresh meat, uh, about uh, over $5 billion in fresh meat this past week, all USDA and USD, D, USDA Choice and uh, Prime. Rotisserie chickens, $4.99. For you students back there, you gotta get this chicken. I mean, it's a dinner for $4.99, and it is a great tasting chicken. Kirkland Signature is our house brand. Uh, we have it on everything, whether it's apparel or uh, automotive products or hardware products or food products, whatever they are. Uh, vitamins, we use one name, Kirkland Signature. So cars, we do a referral business on cars. 
So in the United States this last year, our members bought 270,000 cars through our referral process and another 56,000 cars in Canada. Food court uh, that's famous for the $1.50 hot dog and Coke, that's a, that's a quarter pound plus hot dog, all beef, and a 20 ounce Coke with a free refill for $1.50. There's, there's a, I've been showing this picture of this woman for about 10 years. If she ever catches me, <laughs> the um, optical where I got my glasses, uh, we, we, uh, we've dispensed 4.2 million pair of glasses this past year, and we have op optometrists on uh, premises to give a, an exam. Hearing aids uh, with the aging population, a very popular product. We put the Kirkland Signature name on a hearing aid, which is what I'm wearing. Uh, it's a comp product that would sell for about $5,000 that we sell for $19.99. Our pharmacy, uh, 36 million prescriptions filled this past year in the U.S. alone. Gaylene Garbizo knows a thing or two about paying for prescription drugs. Both of her aging parents take several. Unfortunately, I'm savvy on my mother and my father's behalf. So when she filled a prescription for her mother's Alzheimer's medication, a generic, and not using insurance at this Rite Aid in Cherry Creek, she almost had a heart attack. It was $276. After the shock wore off, Gorbizo started looking for other options. What was your reaction when you found out that you could have gone to Costco and gotten that exact same prescription for $15? Well, somewhere between livid and my heart just really broke for those people that don't have an advocate on their behalf, children or anyone to, to help, help them, them out. out. The, that, that, that type of program, and, the, and I cut that in half, that was uh, about twice as long on evening news. That type of program has run in about 40 major cities across America relative to generic drugs, uh, tailored to the specific community where uh, the TV was done. Our gas stations uh, this past year uh, did $10 billion in sales, uh, 2.9 billion gallons sold, and this is not an unusual scene at one of our gas stations to see cars lined up like that. And I've got to show you this film because this is funny. Is she talking, is about, she talking about the gas prices around the valley that seem to keep growing? <laughs> or the line of cars that keeps growing at Costco? This is the place to be today. While a lot of gas stations are sporting prices in the $1.47 range, Guzzling gas will cost you 20 cents less, 128 per gallon at Costco in Scottsdale. Costco says their price structure helps keep these prices low, but not everyone can get in on the deal. You must be a Costco member to buy gas here at Costco. For some members, it seems the Costco name, coupled with the long lines, was enough to reel them in. But apparently it's got to be cheaper here. That's why I'm here. Oh, so you haven't even seen the prices yet? I have no idea what they're going to charge. <laughs> you know, as a retailer, that's enough to bring a tear to your eye. <laughs> <laughs> and that type of program relative to gasoline was just like the pharmacies. It's been run, that, that clip ran at least twice as long as that. It was in Scottsdale, Arizona, where they did it. Can you imagine getting your name on the news for five minutes in the evening news on 11 o'clock? Our operational uh, mission, very simple. Uh, we do everything that we can to bring goods and services to market at the lowest possible price. That is the mantra. We pay all of our attention. I mean, if we get this item down to $10, we, we start working immediately to see if we can get it down to $9. That is the way we do. That's what we do for a living. And we engage in a lot of operating efficiencies. We don't want to just be the lowest price. We want to be demonstrably lower than anyone else. Why has Costco succeeded? We never had an exit strategy. Uh, we could have sold this company dozens of times. We couldn't now, obviously, because it's uh, so, so much more valuable. But we never intended to sell it. We wanted to build a company, and we operated the company in a fashion that said we want to be here 50 and 60 years from now. We think we owe that to our employees and to our suppliers and to the communities where we do business. We understand the disciplines. Uh, anybody can sell merchandise for low prices. The trick is to be able to do it and make a profit while you're doing it. We've got a great management team. 
many of whom have been with us since the day we opened the doors. Uh, we have a 17-member uh, executive management team, and the average number of years they've been with us is 21 years now. Uh, we're good merchants. We know how to buy and sell goods. Uh, we have a lot of fun at what we do. And like anyone else that succeeded in business, you would have to be a fool to recognize it got some good luck somewhere along the line. We opened our business at exactly the right time. We got all the right breaks. There are lots of smart people out there starting businesses, and they hit a snag somewhere along the line. We were fortunate not to hit a snag that would take us down. Our operational controls are pretty simple. It's easier to tell you what we don't do. Uh, we don't advertise. We don't have a PR department. Uh, we don't accept the major credit cards like MasterCard or Visa. No bags. Everything is recycled in the boxes that we get. We don't carry any high shrinkage items that we can't control. Our shrinkage in our business runs less than one-tenth of one percent. No fancy facilities. Our marketing cost is less than one-tenth of one percent. Every year, the University of Michigan runs a survey on customer satisfaction. And the reason I'm showing you this is that we're always at the top. And so, uh, and so for, you know, for, for a business that doesn't provide or doesn't pretend to provide any service, uh, we do what we think is right to take care of our customers. I tell this story because it, it sets a framework for how we established our business. When we started in business in the state of Washington, we wanted to engage in the sale of beer and wine. Uh, you couldn't sell spirits at that time. And every time we tried to get a license, we were hit with a stumbling block. Some sort of an obstacle was set up beside us. And it went on and on, and finally we had opened the basic business, but we still didn't have a license. So finally the state came out, and they allowed us to post uh, the intent to sell beer and wine on the window right in front of our building. Uh, and then they came in. You had to post for 30 days. They came back at the end of 30 days, and they said, well, we didn't mean here. We meant over here. Yes. And so they stopped us again, and we had to repost for another 30 days. Then they said that they wanted us to change our name, and our name was, at that time, Costco Wholesale Club. So they said, you can't be a club and sell alcoholic beverages. So we said, okay, we'll drop club. So then we went through an intensive audit they came in and audited everything we were buying, things that had nothing to do with alcoholic beverage control, uh, our milk prices, our tire prices, everything. Uh, they put us through the ringer there. And then they suggested that we drop the name wholesale also. And I replied, <laughs> fortunately on our board of directors, we had somebody who knew people down in Olympia and they were able to convince them that I was temporarily insane and we got the thing back on track. But, and then we had further difficulty because in order to stop us, they put a minimum markup of 10% on all beer and wine on the markup, and then conveniently excluded the state stores from having to comply with that. So we sued the state and we won. But we use this as an example because we owe that inspector uh, a vote of thanks because it really made us focus on our business and the way people were going to view us. We said, you know, people are going to ask the question, what's the deal here? You know, they got these forklifts running around in there, they got stuff stacked up to the ceiling, uh, cement floors, open beam, uh, beams in the ceiling. What, what's the deal? You probably there's no guarantee on anything you buy, there's no warranty, probably nothing but a lot of seconds and irregulars. They probably don't pay their employees any money. We set out and were determined then to overcome every objection anybody would ever have for shopping with us, including the fact that we not only guaranteed every single product that we sold unconditionally, but that we also guaranteed your membership unconditionally. If you were a member for 11 months and didn't want to be a member any longer, we gave all of your membership back to you. Uh, so it, again, made us think about how we were gonna run. We established a code of ethics, which is as simple as this. We think that in our business, we have to do four things. We've got to obey the law. We've got to take care of our customers. We've got to take care of our people and respect our suppliers. Pretty much in that order. And we think if we do those four things, 
then we'll do what we ultimately have to do as a public company, which is to reward our shareholders. We think you can reward them sh short term by not paying attention to one of those things, but sooner or later you're going to stub your toe if you're not paying close attention to each of those. Since we went public in 1985, uh, in the 27 years since then, our net sales have grown at a 13.8% compounded rate, our income at a 13.5% compounded rate, and our stock price at a 16.9% compounded rate. Our people are uh, what I am complimented about all the time when I go into the warehouses, what my partner Jeff is complimented about, what all of our management team hears all the time about the quality of the people that we have. We've got 173,000 people, almost all of them eligible for benefits. The only people who are not eligible for benefits are people who have just started, who have a clearing period of 90 days. They all enroll, very few people don't. Our plan is so rich that even people who have spouses working for other companies keep our plan. Our people are highly compensated. The average wage of a person working on the sales floor at Costco, the hourly wage, the hourly employee is almost $22 an hour. We've got low turnover, 11% uh, and 5.7% if, they, if they're with us for a year. And that includes all of our seasonal and our part-time employees as well. And uh, a good portion of our employees and the first place that we recruit in every single city in the world where we do business are at the local universities because we're trying to find some of these young people who want part-time jobs while they're going to school. Our business imperatives improve the next 15 years as we have in the past to continually be a moving target. Uh, because we have so few items, we have to be continually moving around and just about the time that the competitor catches up with us, we're on to something else. We want to be a core value to all of our stakeholders. Uh, with quality products and quality operations, and again, as I mentioned, think like a small company. Uh, Fortune magazine has uh, uh, named us as one of the, they, every year they list the 50 most admired companies in the world, and we've made that list for the past seven years, as you can see there. This is uh, in Australia, a recent opening for us, uh, and I, I show you this because I just love this clip. Uh, that's a view of the inside of the warehouse, but... Uh... Big news today was Woolies and Coles, watch out. There's a new player in town. It's called Costco. Oh. It's a US chain of hypermarkets. They opened their first branch in Australia this morning. There was almost a thousand people queued up with their massive trolleys. I actually went there this afternoon. It's, it's, it's unbelievable what they sell. And the trolleys can get people into trouble. You know how a, a normal sized trolley can hurt when you get your heel clipped? Have a look at what happens when someone's heel gets clipped in a minute, all right? We're going to get to this footage in a minute. Right I ask you, are they big trolleys or small people? No, they are big trolleys because oh. everything is... Oh. That's the matter. <laughs> been there this morning. You know, I spent Saturday night playing Pictionary and writing my shopping list for going to Costco. It's brilliant. Now, to find out more, let's cross to Alicia McCormick, who is live at Costco right now. Alicia, what is a Costco? Costco is massive. I can't even describe how big this place is. Basically, it's a, a supermarket where you have to buy a membership for $60, and there are actually 58 million people around the world that have a membership to this place, and you get big discounts, apparently. And everything is huge here. Look at this. Vegemite. This is the smallest Vegemite. Oh and also... Look at this! Mayonnaise the size oh. of my head. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Also, they sell some, lots, of, lots of different things. You can buy your milk and bread, as a normal supermarket visit would be, and then pop over to jewellery and buy a $160,000 engagement ring. That's five carats. Right in this warehouse. It's insane. That's amazing. And anyway. wouldn't, that, wouldn't that impress your fiancé to be when you said, yeah, got this at Costco? <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, if it's five carats, I'm not asking where it's from. <laughs> This is a scene in one of our Japanese warehouses, uh, another one in our ba another Japanese warehouse there. This is in England, meant to impress you with the mob scene. Uh, and this is in Taiwan. I don't know if any of you have been to Taiwan. They ride these motor scooters everywhere, and you'd be absolutely amazed at what they can get on these motor scooters. Uh, and, you know, literally as much as you get in your car oftentimes. But uh, we were selling this big stuffed bear for $30, and uh, 
and a TV station caught somebody riding down the road with it strapped to their back. <laughs> and if you get down to Cabo San Lucas, uh, you can stop in and get a, uh, a hot dog and a Coke for a buck fifty and watch the cruise ships come in. So I'm sure I've overstayed my welcome here, but uh, that's the end of the story. So. Did, did I go too long for questions? Okay, I can't see anything, so. Okay, your title is now former CEO of Costco. So you obviously have a tremendous passion for retail. What is a day in the life of Jim Senegal, former CEO life? What's a day like now? Yep. Well, I just went to two openings. <laughs> and, and I'm in the office every day, and I'm engaged in a, a couple of special projects. One of the projects that I'm engaged in at the moment is we've identified about 100 people in our company that we think are potential future leaders of our company, and I've set up a special university type of educational program for them uh, and working with them. So I'm spending a lot of time on that, and we'll continue to do that through the balance of this year. So I still got enough to keep me busy, so. Hi. Question for you about uh, Asia and growth. Costco has been successful in Korea, and very few, very few companies have. What are your plans for the biggest emerging market, China? The question is, what are our plans for China? We're successful in Korea, we're successful in Japan, and in Taiwan, for that matter. Um, well, you know, we have looked at China. We've gone over there many times. Um, and we had even established, we were one of the first retailers, I believe maybe the first foreign retailer, to receive central government approval to do business in China. But some things turned around that, you know, there was, it was at a point in time, if you recall, uh, that terrible incident where the U.S. inadvertently hit the Chinese embassy in uh, Bosnia, and our embassy in China and Beijing was un under siege for a couple of weeks, and we just kind of got nervous at that point. You know, our problem is, you know, we think that there are a lot of problems to overcome in China, and we think it's risky at this moment, and we have a lot of stuff on our plate, and we've got plenty of growth to do in the countries that we're in right now, and our attitude is uh, China's been there for a few years. It'll still be there five or six years from now. Uh, we can go there when we're ready on our schedule. Congratulations on your great success, and as famous as your success is, your long lines are just as famous, and I'm wondering if you're thinking about using technology in any way as a line buster or in different ways in the store. That's question number one. And question number two, can you talk a little bit about your Costco home experience? Was the second question about Costco home? The store, the Costco home store. Okay, and, and what was the first question? About using technology in the store, specifically around line busting. Can somebody help me here? Because shortening, oh, shortening the line. Shortening the line. Excuse me. I should have guessed that was going to come up. <laughs> we, you know, we we spent a lot of time on that, and and uh, and our attitude. And people ask us all the time, why don't you put it in an express line? Well, our attitude is we're not in the business of rewarding people for spending less money. <laughs> we, we, you know, we. But at the same time, we recognize that you cannot look past and ignore the fact that on occasions we're not doing the proper scheduling in our warehouses and getting them in line. Now, I can also tell you that the average customer going through the line takes about 40 seconds. That's including the time that it takes to read their card, tender it, and ring the whole order, and take the money and make the change and say thank you. 40 seconds. So even if there were four people in front of you, that's less than a two-minute wait. But when you're looking at people who have stuff stacked up like this, uh, it's discouraging. And so we need to address that issue and get much better at it. And we recognize that it's a shortcoming in some of our buildings, and we're on our managers on a continual basis 
and I think we're doing some things that uh, will improve that. I think we're better this year than we were last year, but we're not where we should be relative to that. Relative to home, we, we set up a couple of businesses called Costco Home. Uh, we sell furniture in Costco during two windows, uh, generally uh, from about the 20th of December until about the 10th of February because that's a window of opportunity where we're after Christmas but before garden. And then we sell it about the end of June through the 15th of August because we're through with garden and we're getting ready for the fall business. Well, we were so successful with furniture, we said, why don't we open one of these things in a market like Seattle where we're very successful and have a lot of members and try to open a really high-end furniture place. Well, we did. And it was successful and it made money. Uh, but the more we got involved in it, the more we looked and we said, you know, we're diverting a lot of time and energy in this thing. And we don't intend to take it any further. We had two at that point, one in, in uh, Kirkland, Washington, and the other one in uh, Tempe, Arizona. And we just made the, and came to the conclusion that it was not something that we were going to roll out everywhere. At about that time, also, the economy took a setback and, and furniture was f tailing off. But despite the fact that we had been profitable in the business all along, we just concluded that it was a business that we didn't want to pursue, and we got out of it. So we, uh, we took all the people that we had there and gave them other jobs. Yes? You mentioned 3,800 SKUs, but then you've just talked about cycling through different items. I'm thinking about how much of your items are short-lived in the store, might not be basics, but in the treasure hunting kind of sense. So is that 3,800 a number that you have at any point in time, and how might that number look at on a, over a whole year or two? 3,800 is the number of SKUs we have right at this moment. By the way, we measure that for every single country. And uh, one country, Mexico, only has 3,600, and we're trying to get that tweaked up to about 3,800, 3,900. 4,000 is the maximum. And you know, we just think we operate best when we're somewhere south of 4,000 SKUs. Now, part of what we do, uh, you know, of those 4,000 items, about 3,000 are basic. It's the kind of product that you can walk in and get at any point in time. You might come in one time and see that we have uh, sk Skippy peanut butter, and you come back the next time and we don't have Skippy, we have Jif peanut butter. We always have an appropriate brand name that's available. Uh, we always have uh, uh, the best, we go out and seek the best buy. And sometimes customers get upset with us because we switch from Skippy to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, Jif, but we, we do it anyway because we think it's our job to find the best buy. But that's about 3,000 of the items, and then 1,000 items are continually changing. Uh, you might come in one time and, uh, and, and see that we have an Under Armour uh, 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 sportswear that we're selling in there. Come in the next time, we don't have the Under Armour, but perhaps we have some uh, Waterford Crystal that we're selling. We're constantly changing those 1,000 items to create that treasure hunt atmosphere that we have. And we do it purposely. We run out of the items because we want to create an attitude with the customer. If they see it, they better buy it because it's probably not going to be there next time. And, uh, and it's effective for us. It works in our business. And so that's how that 4,000 item makeup is, uh, is done. And we do that same type of thing in any category, whether it's television sets or blenders or what, what have you. Well, if that's it, I thank you very much.